Hey guys, so this is the application I'm going to be using today to show you some of the data I've come across. But uh, before I get started, I have seen a lot of people lately complaining of feeling specifically nauseous, dizzy, stomach pain, and headaches. Uh, a lot of people online actually have recently been reporting feeling that way. And I thought this was strange because personally I've been feeling that way too just the past couple days. But uh, so I did some digging. I do have the answer, I believe, guys. SO2, sulfur dioxide. Apparently, breathing sulfur dioxide can irritate the nose, throat, and lungs and can cause coughing and shortness of breath. Short-term exposure to sulfur dioxide can cause stomach pain, menstrual disorders, watery eyes, inhibition of thyroid function, loss of smell, headache, nausea, vomiting, fever, convulsions, and dizziness. Now, as you know, sulfur dioxide is released, you know, usually prior to an eruption, but it's usually when the magma is a lot closer to the surface than usual. If you're feeling at least three or four of these symptoms, like maybe headache, nausea, and dizziness altogether, or anything else, please email me immediately at the address in the description box below. I'm trying to tell how many people are currently being affected by the sulfur dioxide right now. So send the email with your city and state and the time you started feeling sick, time and date you started feeling sick. All right, so, oh, and also, guys, I had an extremely scary dream last night about lava flowing through my neighborhood, and right when uh, I was in the house here, and it, it, it was so real, it felt real, looked real, I mean, it was one of the most real dreams I've ever had. Everywhere was smoking, there were plumes of smoke in the distance, uh, there was lava flowing everywhere, and then, and then my, uh, and then my house started to, to crumble backwards because I'm on a three-story building and it started to buckle backwards a little bit I felt the building falling and I closed my eyes and like you know on a video game when a pause menu comes up it, it, it was so weird it's like a pause menu came up and then it like cut out and then I woke up it was so weird but yeah still it was a pretty scary dream pretty scary I wanted to, to encourage everyone watching this to go to earth.noschool.net I'll leave a link to it in the description box below and do what I'm going to be doing in this video we need as many people as possible on this because I believe the Earth, specifically North America, is in for a wild ride for the next few years. The data I'm about to show you does not seem normal. Also, in order to understand why I'm doing this video, please go back to my previous video titled Scary Long Period Tremors if you haven't seen it already. Alright guys, so let's zoom in to North America. Alright, so once you get to this link right here, go down to this button down here, see how it says Earth? click on earth now we don't need the wind patterns right now so you can turn the wind patterns off after you click earth go down here to mode click chem then click so2sm and it's sulfur dioxide mass at the surface notice how uh, there's a good amount of sulfur dioxide and you can see the scale right here this is barely anything and this is extreme so there's some good amount going on and you can tell there are no stationary plumes over here, but I will get into that a little bit later in the video. Also, you may use the arrows right here to go back in time. This is usually, it's a it's different uh, whatever mode you have, but usually this is three hours back in time and a day back in time. This is three hours forward and a day forward. But once you're on the current day, if you go forward, I think that's just like a forecast or something. But yeah, it's pretty cool because you can go back in time. But if you'd like to go back even a few months or maybe even a year, click back. This is You have to click back first in order to do this. Click back on one of the arrows. It doesn't matter which arrow as long as you click back. And notice up here in the URL how it has a date right here. Well, let's select December 3rd, 2016. And it has a little bit of an archive. And there's the data for 2016. Definitely not as much as SO2 is now. Check it out. Check out now. Yep. A lot of emissions coming. Except it's calmed down a lot right here recently. It will only go back to about 2015, I believe, because that's when the application was created. Obviously, as you guys, everybody knows, Hawaii is one of the most volcanic islands on the face of the Earth. So, you see this right here? That is the volcano in Hawaii. I think they call it Kilauea or something. It's always active. It's always got lava. I mean, it's it's always doing something. Here's the sulfur dioxide emission. All right, let's go back in time. Here we are about a day before. So, let's go three hours ahead, each one. Now, notice where the green reticle is. 
Notice how it's a stationary point because that shows that there's magma right there. It's coming from the ground. See that? Now it's not moving, it's spewing into the atmosphere. Yeah, that's obvious. Now as I go through time, you notice that there was a stationary point pluming SO2 into the atmosphere showing active fumaroles. All right, guys, now remember Mount Agung in Bali in Indonesia? Remember how there was a small eruption, sort of small, in Mount Agung uh, near this time, near November 27th, 2017? Well, the sulfur dioxide content is very low, very low for a volcano on the verge of erupting. You see that? See, there, there's even, there's higher concentrations of SO2 up here in Indonesia, but down here where the actual volcano is, there, there isn't that much. Look, I'll go th forward in time, too. It's very surprising, because they said there's a large amount of SO2 being emitted from there, and 8.52, that's actually not that much. Now, if they think that sulfur dioxide being emitted from Mount Agung right now is a problem, then they should really see what's going on in North America right now. Because we got way higher SO2 contents in North America right now than over here, where a volcano is supposed to be erupting. Yes, guys, North America has a higher SO2 content than a volcano that's about to erupt. What? I swear to God, everything is just going absolutely insane. All right, guys, so remember I put out a video yesterday about uh, this article on USGS about sulfur dioxide? Well, look right here. Sulfur dioxide is released from a volcano when magma is relatively near the surface. It doesn't matter if it's a volcano or not. If magma is near the surface, it's going to release sulfur dioxide, SO2, in stationary points, vents. Because as you know, it's not going to be moving all over the place. You know what I mean? You're going to see stationary vents, kind of like you did see in Hawaii, which I don't know why there isn't one in Mount Agung, because that volcano is supposed to be erupting, but it's not putting off that much SO2. So I will leave a link to this in the description box if you did not see my previous video, and you should really read this. And when you read it, go up here and click on fumaroles and vents. Definitely learn about that. Some good info. All right, now here is where things get a little interesting. Let's go back to America. Let's, for example, go back to a random date. Let's say December 1st, 2015. All right, here's the sulfur dioxide content and ground level for December 1st, 2015. Now notice something. Notice as I go through time how there are some stationary plumes. You notice that right here? But not that high of content, and they look very dull. I'm going to say there's probably only, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to say probably just seven vents. And it wasn't, it seems pretty strong here in 2015. But let's go forward in time. Let's go to May 7th, 2016. All right, guys, here's May 7th, 2016. Notice this large blob up here. Look at that. That is, look, look at the count, 464. 508, 505, that's way more than an erupting volcano. Way more. And let's see if it moves. Does it move? Nope, it's a stationary point. But notice how there's only a couple. They are big, I have to say, but notice how there's only a couple. And then eventually they move away. But notice right here how there's no plumes coming out right here. There's only, I'm going to say, a few. There's only a few plumes. And, you know, this looks worse than it is now, but trust me, it's not because there's some new vents that have appeared. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to show that the current ground SO2 emissions in the way they are forming is not normal. I'm trying to create a baseline here, actually. Now, there are some large SO2 vents in Canada, but they don't last too long. So now let's go to December 7th, 2016. Here we go. Notice how those blobs kind of disappeared. And there's some new ones here and here, but the pattern of them keeps changing. But the current vents that are giving out SO2 right now, they haven't changed since June. So it's constantly, constantly, constantly pumping SO2 into the atmosphere over and over and over and over. There is some small venting in Canada, but it's not major because most of them are not stationary points that last for more than a month. 
Now, we're going to go to around the first day that these vents appeared. All right, guys, notice this. Here's the current pattern, but this is June 10th of this year, 2017. This is around the time that these new vents started to appear, especially the vents down in Yellowstone. And here's this right here. I don't know where that's coming from, but as you can see, this, they started to appear, coincidentally, when Yellowstone's largest quake swarm appeared. You remember the swarm that started in June? in which Yellowstone reached its yearly average of earthquakes within three frickin' months? Yeah. This must be connected to Yellowstone. It has to be. I don't know what's going on, but that that's not a coincidence. I, I don't believe in coincidences, personally. Now, here's my main point. Remember my video about uh, titled Scary Long Period Tremors? Well, let's go to the day that those tremors started. We're going to show each three-hour period up until November 30th in rapid succession. All right, so I created an animated GIF of the activity of those tremors. You remember those tremors I made a video about? Well, this is the SO2 activity during that time, and you can see a notable increase of SO2 activity during these tremors, right around the peak time. And you see all these stationary points, especially up here, 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 um, here, here, here. I mean, I mean, it's just everywhere. You see all those stationary points? That is coming from the ground. Now, remember when we went back in time just a little bit ago, how there was only, I'm going to say, three, four big blobs, mostly. Look at all these now. These are brand new. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, uh, 28, 29, 30, uh, 31, 32. Yeah, there's a lot. And so I'm pretty sure this is related to all the health problems people have been having lately. And I noticed the concentration is down near possibly the eastern half of the United States. All right, so here's again June 10th, and then let's go to now. And that's now. Look at how much there is. Look at that. And you can see here on the eastern half of the United States, there is a lot of SO2 concentration. But as you will see, notice how the dots of SO2, notice how they kind of move with the flow of the wind, showing this is not coming from the ground, but this is actually coming from somewhere else, but it's not coming from inside the ground, like it's not coming from a vent. But if you look up here, look right here, notice how those are stationary. Personally, I believe all of this right here is pushing all the SO2 down here. I don't know what's going on. It's very strange. But the amount of SO2, the concentrations are pretty much what you would see on a volcano bef before it erupts. Like, it takes a while for an eruption to occur once the signs appear, depending on the size of the volcano and the magma chamber in question. But there's not supposed to be any volcanoes here. At all. So I don't know what the hell is going on. And this is today, by the way, and I'm going back in time. Notice how those points are stationary, showing that it is venting from the ground. Now, these stationary points do give us the conclusion that these are active volcanic fumaroles or vents. They have to be. They absolutely have to be. And especially if you type in the coordinates on Google Earth, you will see that I thought, okay, maybe there's a bunch of factories up there that are doing something. God knows what. But there aren't that many factories that can produce this amount of SO2 in these areas. All right, so we're here on November 28, 2017, when those tremors were occurring, the scary long period tremors. And let's go forward in time again. See those stationary points? See that? Never used to be like that until around May or June of this year. Look at that. There's even some right here, too. And up here, look at that concentration. 407 of that stationary point. Should not be that high. I mean, it literally looks like an erupting volcano, but I doubt there's any volcanoes up there. There aren't. I mean, all the volcanoes are here. I did a lot of research, and there's not supposed to be volcanoes up there. So maybe the crust is becoming increasingly thin? I have no clue. So if you guys want to uh, see the animated GIF that I created for the SO2 emissions during the long period tremors, 
just email me at the email address in the description box below and I'll send it to you. Man, I wish it was snowing like that here. Man, I love snow. So, putting all the data together, it does seem that magma is beginning to rise dramatically all over North America. And these new vents appeared somewhere around June 2017 and have never been seen before, which coincidentally is the same time that Yellowstone's largest earthquake swarm appeared. Remember, if you go deep enough, oh, and also this year is the same year that the three largest earthquake swarms hit the Yellowstone area, Lincoln, Montana, Yellowstone, and Soda Springs, Idaho, which Soda Springs, Idaho was the biggest earthquake swarm ever in that area. It was over 900 quakes during the swarm, and almost every single one was 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. Now, remember, if you go deep enough, you will find magma no matter where you go. So, with these tremors being felt almost 2,800 miles away, coupled with the increase of volcanic fumarole, suggests there is going to be an eruption soon, maybe a year or two, somewhere in North America, unless this calms down. I have no idea where or how what the size of the eruption would be. But actually, would not be surprised if a brand new volcano appears. This is just my preliminary result, and more data will be uploaded when compiled. I actually encourage every single person who is interested in this to dig into this. Remember, to judge whether an eruption is coming for anywhere, you must use gas emissions, seismic, and ground deformation data, and all data suggests Yellowstone, or somewhere northwest of Yellowstone, like Montana and Idaho, may be experiencing a sharp spike in magmatic activity. But the thing I'm asking is, where's the swarms? I thought there'd be more earthquake swarms if this was happening. But if it's all happening up in Canada, a lot of earthquakes in Canada are reported by the Canadian Seismic Agency, but it's not reported by the USGS for some weird, weird reason. Now, why is the magma rising so dramatically everywhere? What can cause this? And is this related to the large booms that people have been hearing lately? I think so. Maybe a pole shift is coming? Who knows? But I do know this is exactly what you would see if a planet was approaching. Tidal forces would cause magma to rise worldwide. It would make weather go crazy. It would create a large increase of earthquakes and magnetic field fluctuations, meaning auroras would be seen farther south and will be lower in altitude, which is exactly what is happening now. Exactly. I mean, it really looks like and a planet is approaching. I mean, every single thing that would have to happen for a planet to approach is happening right now. Well, let me know what you think, and if you have any suggestions or constructive criticism or any extra data for me, just email me at the email address in the description box below or leave a comment. Just let me know what's going on, and if you are feeling sick and it started around November 28th, please let me know, please, because this could have to do with the increase of sulfur dioxide in the air. Well, guys, God bless, and stay safe in this turbulent world.